Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Smith. I am the Executive Director of Public Affairs for the Minnesota Twins. And I want to thank you for coming to Target Field on this most sad and somber day in Twins history. Um, we thought it would be a good idea to gather a very esteemed group of former players who were very, very close to Harmon Killebrew, who passed away early this morning, who some of whom have seen Harmon yet in the past several days, and who have some great stories to tell about their remembrances of Harmon. And we wanted to get you all here today to let you hear their stories, ask you some questions as we um, go on to this uh, next segment of Twins History without uh, one of our great ambassadors. Uh, my first order of business is to uh, introduce Dave St. Peter. He's the uh, Twins president who can speak on behalf of ownership today and the organization. When Dave is done, we'll turn it over to the guys to say what they would like to say, and then we'll open it up for questions uh, for you. So without further ado, please uh, welcome Dave St. Peter to the podium. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Um, on behalf of the, uh, the Polad family, um, our entire organization, and Millions of fans across uh, Twins territory, I think I can say that uh, it is a sad day. Uh, it's a sad day in, in, in the essence that, that, that Harmon has passed on. That said, we know this has been a very challenging uh, fight for him, and, and I know personally that he's in a better place today. As an organization, I think it's very rare when you come across an iconic figure such as a Harmon Killebrew. To multiple generations of Twins fans, Harmon Killebrews really was the Twins. And we were very blessed as an organization to maintain that connection and really bring Harmon back into the fold in a big way in the mid-1990s. And he really connects the dots from the start, the day we moved from Washington to today, as he continued to serve as a spring training instructor and was incredibly active, along with his wife, Nita, on many fundraising initiatives for both the Twins Community Fund, the Miracle League Fields, and so many other charities. And I think when, 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 when Harmon is remembered, he'll be certainly remembered as one of the greatest home run hitters in the history of the game and as a true hero on the field. But more importantly, it's the work he's done off the field and the way he treats people, I think, was absolutely sensational and a model for all of us as human beings to follow. As we go forward, our franchise will pay tribute to Harmon in a variety of ways, hopefully by playing better baseball. That'd be the first thing we could do. And I know as I spent time with Harmon the other night, the one thing he wanted to talk about was our team. What's going on with our team, Dave? He was always thinking about others. He was worried about Gardy. As a club, we will do a few things to pay tribute to Harmon. It'll start tonight. We will wear a number three uniform patch uh, uh, commencing tonight in Seattle. Um, as we come home for Monday's game uh, against Seattle, there will be a variety of different things inside the ballpark. His signature, which is probably the cleanest, most classy signature in all of baseball, will adorn the outfield wall at Target Field as a lasting symbol of, of, of the class that he brought every single time he signed an autograph. Uh, in addition to that, we will fly a number three flag immediately adjacent the Twins Territory flag, um, just uh, on the other side of Target Plaza. We also are in constant communication with the family about services. We do not have anything definitive to announce. I expect uh, that information will come out later today, along with information about a public memorial service that will take place here at Target Field uh, next week, most likely on Thursday, May the 26th, which is an off day for our club. We thank you for coming today. and. Um, we ask everybody to uh, continue to give your thoughts and prayers to the Killebrew family. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. And uh, I'll turn it over to our, uh, our guest here today. I can tell you that uh, this news broke fast this morning, and the fact that we can get all these gentlemen here uh, on a couple hours' notice in the middle of the day speaks volumes to what uh, Harmon meant to them. So I'd like to turn it over, and we'll go right down the line here to Ken Herbeck here first to talk a little bit about Harmon and what he meant to you, and then we'll go right down the line here. Well, thanks, Kevin. Uh, definitely a sad day um, when you lose an, an icon. Um, followed Harmon for as long as probably anybody in there except for maybe Jack and 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 uh, and Molly. Um, being a uh, a kid growing up in the area, uh, you had idols when you were, when you were playing the game of baseball. And uh, not only this guy sitting next to me, Antonio Oliva, but Harmon Killebrew was. 
the two people that you thought of when you thought about Twins baseball, and and uh, um, you never think it's going to happen. And and uh, I, I think Harmon has has become something of a Paul Bunyan in the state of Minnesota, and uh, just spent the last week up in the Brandon area where Paul Bunyan was always an icon and, and found out the news about Harmon and, and it's, it's kind of ironic that these two go together I think in my life because uh, Harmon was to me Paul Bunyan with a, with a uniform on and uh, uh, tough to see him go and, and uh, Harmon was a great guy and, and uh, uh, talked with Harmon the last few years played in his golf tournament out in Arizona and it, it's a uh, it's never talk baseball with Harmon it was always talk about family and friends and uh, um, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a sad day. We lost an icon. We lost we lost Paul Bunyan. I guess that's about all I have to say. Thanks, Kent. Now next, uh, Tony Oliva. Thank you, Kevin. You know, last last Saturday uh, was a uh, very tough. Tri trip for me, uh, I'm a very happy one for me, uh, Julio uh, Becker, because uh, I get here to the ballpark on Friday, and this was when we have this bad news uh, about uh, Hamo decision and how he feeling, and uh, I see right away my wife decided you have to get there, but I get uh, I get here when I get here and there's some people and. And Brian and a couple of people uh, in the organization asking me if I want to come down with that. I said, yes, I go right away. And I don't know how they did it, but they put everything uh, together so quickly that the next day, uh, Saturday morning, I was in the plane to uh, Arizona, uh, Julio Beck and myself. But when I get there, uh, that was a very happy time for me because I was able to see Hamon Kilibru almost the way that I know him before. Uh, I, I, I went there, Julio and me, and we get to his rooms. He, he was in bed and have a chance to talk to him for a few minutes. But about half an hour later, he decided to come outside. He was outside for his, for his family. There was about 20 or 30 people there. And he stayed at least one hour or hour and a half outside in the patio talking uh, baseball and, and, and talk about Minnesota Twins. And Julio Becker right here uh, making him uh, laugh all the time because uh, the first thing he asked, hey, Kille, your shadow is here. Because Kille, he was the player, and he was the car, you know, the guy who came to play for him and, and sometime or defense or however. But they know, they, they got together for 56 years, and Kille was laughing. Uh, and that was very happy for me because I was thinking I could see him in very bad shape. Uh, when I saw him laughing and talking, and uh, I, it was a big surprise for me. Uh, that was on Saturday. And uh, I was very happy for me to have uh, the opportunity to get there and see him in person. And the next day on Sunday, that was a different story. Uh, I come back on Sunday again and I'm visiting, and, and he was very down, and he was. You know, you can see he was hurt. Um, but uh, I stayed uh, in the end and, and come out and say hello and give him a hug. And, and he said, you know, I love you. I love you guys, you know. And still, he mentioned Minnesota Twins. And, 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 and that is something that the person who know Killebrew uh, is tough what they miss because you know him f for being a great ball player, a great home run hitter, but you don't know how good a person he was if you don't know him. And uh, have the opportunity to know him for 50 years. When I first came here to Minnesota, I don't speak one word in English. And he called me rookie. Still 50 years later, he called me rookie. And he was a superstar. And he trained me the same way as I was one of the big 
guys in the ball club. And I never saw Killy Brew putting nobody down. Uh, I keep it said to everybody that he was too nice to be a baseball player because I never see him get mad. I never saw him throw a hammer. I never saw him throw a bat. And he never saw him say nothing, only help people. And, and as a teammate, I don't think I can have a better teammate, better friends, um, better is, is sample the hum, the hum clear for me. Very nice, well stayed. And next, uh, Paul Molitor, who also was down to Arizona recently. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, you know, just just a few things for me. Um, you know, I know it's a sad day. Um, we lost. You know, one of the most legendary sports figures in the history of our state, and with the integrity to back it up. But you know, there's there's joy too. I mean, I'm I'm glad that God brought him home after the suffering he's been through the past few months. And um, there's also joy in that. You know, we have memories and the smiles that we all shared when we think about Harmon. And, um, you know, in, in, in death, you think about life. And in our life, if you're mindful of Harmon, your life will be enriched. And, um, and that's a good thing. So, um, you know, he, Harmon only spent, what, a, a quarter of his life as a major league player. The other three quarters as a tremendous human being, included with his time as a player. I was so impressed by his servanthood, his foundation, people he touched, um, the way he gave, the, the way he gave back. You know, it was a it was a tremendous example for someone like myself. And uh, you know, I guess just finally, um, thankfully, uh, my wife Destiny and I did get out there, and and like Tony's wife, she said, you know, you got to go, and and I'm glad that we we did. Um, I saw the joy that he had even at the end with the love and the hugs and the kisses from his wife and his children and his grandchildren and and uh, it was beautiful um, you know but I, I'm grateful that I could tell him as a young man growing up in this state um, to have idolized him and and just um, that I was very appreciative of of the man he was and how I was able to learn from him and that I, that I picked, you know, the guy that you would want to pick to be your idol, you know, so that's what I got. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Julio Baguer. Uh The last uh, Saturday and Sunday probably perhaps was one of the most happy days in my life. For the standpoint that here there was a man that I admire and in the condition that he was. So it's no, he was more than a friend. After 50 or some years, we practically together because I'm seeing almost every year of those years. And he was uh, a great human being. He was a great guy, a great fan. Uh, one of those guys that have that aura that's approachable, and not only light, but love by many, many, many people. Thank you, Julio. It's hard oh, to describe Harmon. I would try, but, but it's hard to describe to say how great he was. Not only as a baseball player, but as a human being. Uh, once you meet Harmon, you will never forget Harmon. Never, never. It's that, that most impression and that most feeling that he gives you and he treats you almost like you were special. I have a tremendous, as a player, I have a tremendous admiration for him because he's dominion in the ball field. As a teammate, he was unbelievable. He was one, uh, perhaps one of the most positive individual that I have ever met. And he never, never, under any circumstances, give you the impression that, or pretend there was what it wasn't. So I can keep arriving and arriving, as you can see, how much admiration I have for the men. I love the men. 
And like I say, he was not just a friend. He was almost like a family to me. Thank you, Julio. And now Frank Willisey. <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I always used to say I was Killebrew's caddy. And, uh, but it didn't start out that way. Uh, when I first came to the Minnesota Twins, I was sitting in the clubhouse in spring training, and I didn't know what was going to happen. And I was excited and everything else, and here comes this stocky guy and had on a towel around him. I didn't know what he was going to do, but he stuck his hand out, and he said to me, uh, Frankie, he says, best of luck, pal. He said, we got a heck of a ball club on this. And he says, I hope you make the team. My name's Harmon Killebrew. And I just looked up at him, and I says, I love you too, pal. <laughs> and, uh, but he was really the face of the organization uh, because of his uh, strength, uh, because of the way he played the game, the way he carried himself. Um, but there wasn't a patsy in it, believe me. Uh, if he got angry, he got angry inside himself. And you could see it when it was because he got quiet. And he just was determined, whether he struck out, whether he made an error, uh, maybe uh, something was going wrong as far as the ball club winning, that kind of stuff. He could, you could see him gritting his teeth. And uh, from that time on, I didn't make the ball club that year, but uh, later on in the year, I, I was called up. And... Uh, team was having a heck of a time and he had hit that home run we listened to it in triple a ball uh, just before the all-star game when they beat the yankees god i loved how we hated the yankees and uh, he did too and he didn't hate the men he just hated getting beat by them <laughs> and uh and so i used to i was at second base and i was just excited to be there and everything else and i was yelling across the infield at him and I'm saying Harmon, Harmon and if you knew Harmon when he played he, he was into the game all the time and he was at third base and he's taking his lead off the pitcher and he's, he's watching when he's going to throw in so he could be ready to feel the ball and I'm, I'm, I'm aggravating him by yelling Harmon, Harmon and then finally he just stepped back and he says Frank what do you want and I said I love you and he said what? And I says, I'm going to build a new deck on my house because of you. And uh, from that day, I don't think I, I just think he thought I was crazy. But but we became really good friends. And he was he was not a mentor, uh, but he was a guy that you could talk to. And you talk to him about different hitters. You talk to him about pitchers, because when you come up, you wanted to know. Uh, where to play as far as the infield was concerned, and Harmon would move from third to first base. He was one of those guys in a super star that uh, you'd say, uh, Harmon, would you play center field? And he'd probably say, yeah, sure. <laughs> and he'd go out there. But he was asked to go from third to first, designated hitter, and uh, never a peep out of him. Never anything uh, looked on his face. And so uh, why I was saying he was the face of the twins is because you could look at him and you knew that he was a quiet man, but, but inside of him he was one of the biggest competitors you ever met in your life. He got a bad rap about, about his glove, but I got a chance to play second base when he was at third and first base, and, and uh, I learned that not only did he have good hands, you know, he broke in as a shortstop, but he, he could feel, but he had a nice soft throw at, as far as second base was concerned. And that was, that was big for a second baseman to be able to complete the double play. And he was very accurate. He, he didn't have the lateral, uh, you know, uh, uh, distance that some guys did. But he always worked at his game and uh, never... I, I never saw a guy overcome more injuries in a career to continue to stay in the lineup. And uh, I remember, and maybe you remember, I believe it was the 68 All-Star game when he did the splits. And, uh, 
and he injured himself, he actually told me that he had pulled a piece of bone off his hip. And, uh, and so he was out for a while, and uh, he was coming out of the training room. He had his robe on, and I, I said to Harmon, uh, I said, how you feeling there, bro? And he, so he started to do a little tap dance, and his feet went out from under him, and he crashed down to the, to the locker room. And I says, oh, geez, I'm going to get sent back to the minor leagues for that one. But it actually helped him uh, to break some of the scar tissue, and ironically, it helped him to get back into the game. And so I took credit for that. But uh, he had a great sense of humor, just absolute. But he, he, he only kind of showed it with friends and people that were close. With the public, he was cordial. And like Dave was talking about, I, if you saw his hand, if you ever signed it, the only reason you knew it was his signature is because you watched him sign it. I always uh, uh, told him that I thought he had a stamp, you know, on all the pictures, but he actually signed every single one of them, and he had the greatest handwriting in the world. And, uh, but we became really good friends, and, and, uh, he said to me, uh, you're going to be on my foundation. And I said, are you asking me? He says, no, you're going to be on my foundation. I said, okay, Harm. <laughs> and, uh, and he said it with a smile. Uh, but we were very close over the years uh, because of the, uh, I actually had an opportunity to, to manage him. And, uh, and you really didn't manage him. You just kind of asked him if he was in, if he was feeling good that day. He befriended Danny Thompson, who had leukemia on that team, and he kept his spirits up. He was always keeping guys' spirits up. And if you were in a slump, you're liable to get more attention from him because if things weren't going good, he knew what it was all about. And he'd pet guys up that way. He wasn't a holler guy. But he was a guy that was one-on-one. -on -one. And when something needed happening, like Tony was talking about, he was there to help you out. He's, he's really going to be missed as far as our organization. And I can say ours because I've been in it since 1961. And uh, how important he was to the people that signed up. Because I think even in the scouting, uh, back in the old days when we didn't have central scouting, the the our our ball club had local scouts in all the places. They used to find out about these kids that were coming up, their families, everything else, and they signed them. And I think they purposely looked for people that had a lot of the characteristics that Killer Brew had. And so as a result, we did get a lot of really class act guys in our organization that love to play the game, play it together as a team. And that was Harmon. And uh, he was an example for everybody. Uh, he did the same thing to me, and he says, uh, you're going with me to Japan. <laughs> and I says, what am I going to, what am I going to do in Japan? He says, you're going to watch my back. <laughs> and uh, we went and we had about 146 uh, countries represented of kids uh, from about 12 to 15 years old that were there. And to see him work with these kids, and these kids knew who Harmon Killebrew was in all these countries because he wasn't only popular in the United States and in Minnesota, he was popular all over the world. And so I've been emailing uh, Nita and who between them, I think they have over 25 grandkids, I'm not sure. But they have a wonderful family, and uh, he truly loved his wife and, and the kids and the grandkids. And when we used to visit him, when we had foundation meetings in Arizona, he was, he was just delighted to introduce us to the kids and get to know them, and he wanted us to get to know them. He's a great family man. And so... Uh, uh, we've lost a, a dear friend, but uh, we'll never, never lose the memory of this guy. Thanks, Frank. And Jack Morris. Thanks, Kevin. 
I don't know how I can say anything that hasn't already been said. Um, I think like Kent and, and Paul, you know, I lost a hero today. And I think uh, the one thing that hits home the most with Harmon is his strength. Not as a player, but as a person. And his kindness, and the strength in his kindness, to me, he was a real man. He was all man. Because he loved so much. He is this family that we call the Minnesota Twins. I think at this point, I think it's more of a celebration of his life than it is a mourning of his death for me. I'm going to always remember the good in, in Armin. And like Paul and like Kent, to, to remember the innocence of being a young kid who, uh, who just looked up to a, a guy he didn't know because of what he did as a baseball player, something that you hoped that maybe someday he could be like. But as a grown man now, I'll look back at him, not as that guy, but as the guy who uh, tried to show me that you don't have to be angry, you don't have to be mad. You can, you can love and share love. We're all going to miss him, and we're all going to love him forever. Uh, exactly right, Jack. Uh, we, if there are any questions, we've got live microphones on either side of the chairs here. So if you have questions, grab a mic before you ask, and please ad address to the question to whom you wish to ask it. Thanks. Uh, Kent, um, for you growing up in the shadow of Met Stadium, what do you recall about, about going to games, watching Killebrew as a kid yourself? And, you know, just sort, sort of what he meant to you as a kid. Um, you know, just a, it was Harmon Killaby who was going to hit third or fourth in the lineup, um, fourth, I guess, uh, most of the time. Um, that number three on his back, uh, a bleacher seat out in left field is where I always sat. Um, and hopefully, you know, he had the best chance to get the baseball when Harmon came to the plate. And, and don't ever leave the ballpark uh, if the Twins are, uh, had a chance to tie a ball game or win a ball game if Harmon was making it to the plate. I mean, you, you never left. Um, you know, it, it brings back childhood memories of, of going to the ballpark with, with my dad and my family and stuff. So, you know, it was a, a time when I was a baseball fan of, of, of the Minnesota Twins all, all my life, I guess, and, and still am today. Um, I got lucky enough to play the game for the Twins and, and get to know Harmon Killebrew. And like I said, he, he's an icon, and, and um, it was, you know, I guess, that number three. That, that, that's what I think about Harmon Killebrew, I guess, is seeing that number three on his back and standing there at the plate. Uh, Molly, you, uh, you and Harm spent a lot of time at the... Uh at the uh, at Cooperstown, I just wonder how he was received around the great players at Cooperstown too. When you would go there for the Hall of Fame uh, celebration, <clears throat> I you know I, I think it's you know you could probably answer that yourself, Charlie. He um, you know you know that the kind of man he is that you see around here and around fans and around the minor leaguers and wherever. I mean, the respect that he gives out comes back to him and that's the same true amongst that group um it, it's no different i mean that's one of the things that you hear across the board up here is is the consistency uh that Harmon brought to whatever person or circumstance or wherever it was so um just a lot of respect that uh, that he commanded from that group as well other questions Dave Campbell, the AP. Kent, uh, just a quick follow-up. Did you ever come close to getting one of those balls that <laughs> Harmon hit in the left field bleachers? No, I talked, with, uh, I talked to Harmon about that uh, a few years ago. I had never got a home run ball out there. I, I, uh, um, I used to rib him about it. every time I was waiting for him to hit one to him, he always struck out. And, and, uh, <laughs> 
could hear that bat hit his back when he swung the bat and missed too. And, and I always kidded him about that. And, and uh, he would always say back to me, you know, you struck out a few times too, kid. So we would joke with each other about that. But uh, no, I never did catch one from harm. Anyone else? Okay, well, thanks, guys, for coming. That means a lot to us. Uh, and thank you for coming. And uh, keep uh, Harmon's family in your prayers. Thank you.